Okay. Yeah. All right. So what I'd like to do is just kind of walk around um, the, the built the exterior first, then we'll go through the interior views that I created for you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start doing kind of cross sections through the house and look at that. And, you know, please, if I go through or I'm going too fast, ask me to slow down. Or if um, if you have any questions uh, or changes you would like to make, um, just interrupt me and we'll we'll stop through that. Um, it's a little more difficult when we do Zoom than in person because we, you know, it's harder to know if you're taking it in or if you have a question or whatever else. So just uh, feel free to stop me if I start going too fast or um, you're not following along. But okay. um, it, anyways, um, what I've got right now is um, I've... Uh, I've the front elevation. I mean, everything on the elevations, I think, pretty much stayed the same mm -hmm. um, as what we originally had. You'll see a couple notes that I made um, to the parapet roof being up here that needs to be engineered and there being a roof back here uh, mm -hmm. with medical coping on the top and scuppers that'll help with uh, alleviating the the rain from there. So all of that stuff will be part of the the company, but you'll see some additional notes to the exterior. Um, mm -hmm. But even here, you can kind of see kind of pretty cool through the front door. You can see the the see through staircase with the glass going up. Um, mm -hmm. Really, really looks cool, even from the front door. Yeah, yeah we um, love that. So, uh, but uh, I know you were kind kind of concerned about that, but it really looks really nice on the mm -hmm. from every view that I've seen. So. So what I've done is you'll see some of these windows are a little bit taller, you know, in main areas like the dining room. You know, I did taller glass, but when we were back, you know, off in, you know, secondary bathrooms and stuff like that, I just put, you know, this window up here. It's at that same eight foot height. But anywhere we had the, mm -hmm. the taller ceilings or better rooms where we could do better windows, I went ahead and went with taller windows um, mm -hmm. just to get more glass on there. And you'll also see that I added these vents, um, you know, to my calculations, this will mm -hmm. be plenty of vents, you know, for you. I've got three on the inside of the garage. I got mm -hmm. four on this wall, four on this wall. The code states that you have to have them on at least three walls. However, mm -hmm. um, Bel Air, sometimes they come back and they say, hey, I want one or two on the front wall. But we try mm -hmm. to do it without it at first. And then mm -hmm. if we have to add them, we'll add them to it. But you can kind of see on the back wall. Back here, mm -hmm. I did five because another rule is you have to have one three feet from every corner. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I went ahead. So probably I didn't need this one. Mm -hmm. For volume, I probably do since we have none on the front. So I mm -hmm. went left it where the volume we have is enough flow to get water out from underneath the house. So mm -hmm. I think we'll be good. But the engineer is going to do his calculations once we send it to the engineer. Mm -hmm. And then once he does his calculations, if he says we don't need this many, I'll remove one or two. Okay. Okay. Then we, then we submit it to the city, and the city will have to review it and say what they think. You know, mm -hmm. and even sometimes the engineer will say, "Hey, Tim, you only need 16, and I'll have 16." And they, the you know, the city will come back and say, "Hey, I want one on this corner," and I'll have to do it. You know, just because mm -hmm. they end up, you know, they're the boss when it comes to it. So mm -hmm. uh, overall, I think you know. Uh, the only elevations that's really the only things that i've added additional um mm -hmm. on the back of the house um you know i uh i did notice that we didn't you you know carry across a whole lot of stone um on mm -hmm. the back of the home so i was going to say one of the things we could do if you wanted to use more stone mm -hmm. is column stone on the back of the house but again that's more expense that you have to put into this project so i don't know that mm -hmm. you want to do that um, no, I think that would be good. Actually, that's a good idea to add column stones on them. Okay. Yeah. So I can, I probably can do that real quick on the fly um, mm -hmm. while we're talking. So synthetic stone on orange column. Um, have a room. Um, synthetic stone on orange column. Uh, synthetic stone. Perfect. Yeah. And then this one, that somehow, there we go.
there we go. Mm -hmm. So it did bring a little bit more splash of stone in there, kind of gives right. you a, a little bit more of that element on the back of the house. Um, the other thing is, is that because I put these windows here, I needed them to be at least six inches off of the header for here. Mm -hmm. so, so this right here through the middle, when mm -hmm. we get back from engineering, I'll see since we have a six inch wall, but he's probably going to say that right through here, we're going to have to have a still, a still beam. Okay. Um, so we'll see once we get it back from engineering. And if I can, if I, if we can't do it, then I'll adjust the windows. However, we need to adjust them, but mm -hmm. it looks really good the way they are. But when we usually go less than 14 inches right here, which I think this is 12, um, mm -hmm. they, they call it out as a still beam to go across there. Okay. But, uh, that glass door is really going to be killer on the house. So I wouldn't even here look in the back, looking through the back, look at that staircase. Yeah. Looks really yeah, I, did, I didn't realize it was a floating staircase. So it does look really nice. Yeah. It's, and I mean, even my interior views, I don't like them as much because like this, I can mm. see that it's, that it's glass and see through where mm. those little views I sent you, that glass actually reflects back. So you can't see through it. Mm. So it kind of, I felt like took away from my views that I sent you, but. But on the outside, again, like over here on the dining room, this front bedroom, that's I use taller glass there. You don't have to if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you're in the main area downstairs and it's 12 feet and you're seeing all of this nice open area, it's going to be really nice with the bigger windows. Yeah. These are fixed glass. So because mm -hmm. it's like in a dining room, you don't need it to open. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be very expensive, you know. It's not like I mean, it's not like a casement window or anything like that. So, okay. and then and then I also have them split into two panes so they can do them either mold or or one big window with cross panes. But so you have an option of a lot of different window companies because mm -hmm. every window on here is just is a standard size. So I use no custom windows. Okay. Um, the only thing that's custom, you know, that mm -hmm. it's not that custom, but you'll have to figure out your door. Mm -hmm. So I know your door's probably not going to end up being 12 foot tall. You're probably going to have mm -hmm. a piece of glass up here at the top. You know, you make mm -hmm. 10 foot, um, probably 10 foot with two foot on top. Um, but that's kind of your call on how you do that on the door. Um, I mean, we can make a custom door for 12 foot, I think, because that's the entrance. So we want it to be really nice. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. And I mean, it's, I, I mean, I think no matter which way you look at it, I mean, even this way, I really love the flatness of this element here just cries out, you know, modern. Yeah. Um, and then um, I used the glass railing here on the front just because mm -hmm. it was, and I don't know if you noticed that <laughs> I kind of did this when I did the elevations and I didn't really mm -hmm. talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. But originally I had this as one big open area with a piece of glass up here. Mm -hmm. But then I thought about since I had to have that hallway going across to get to this door, it mm -hmm. was really cool to have kind of a little front balcony. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, seen... so like when you're in the game room, you know, you can mm -hmm. come out here to these doors and you can sit out on a front balcony. So that'll be like really, really awesome. So that's why I kind of added that when we went to elevation stages. I don't even know that you noticed that. Mm, no, we didn't. Yeah, I realize. So, I think so, 3D is much easier to understand. Yeah. So what I did is when I saw this door, mm -hmm. I was I had a big window up here, and I was like, "Well, why don't I just add another door?" And then now we've got a balcony that mm -hmm. we can access from the second floor if you're in the game room or whatever that looks overlooks the front yard. Right. So, so and that's pretty cool because a lot of people like to hang out, you know, and on a on a you know, a front balcony, um, mm -hmm. you know, so anyway, so you basically, you've got a front balcony, a back balcony as well, but I think overall the exterior turned out great. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it did help a little bit, adding a little bit more splashes of stone. Mm -hmm. Um, so now it's kind of very symmetrical. Um, right. so you have stone on all, you know, in the middle on the ends and because it's a column, mm -hmm. it's not going to be that, you know, that much more stone, but right. Um, but still going to add a nice, I think, I feel a nice accent. Um, then do y'all have any questions about the exterior so far? No, I think we love it. Okay. Okay. So let me go to the interior views that I created for you. And then we'll start breaking things apart on the interior. But um, so this is, it's in alphabetical order. So this is starting upstairs, but 
So what I did, because glass is so expensive, I did the glass railing mm -hmm. on just the staircase. And then when you go upstairs, it mm -hmm. turned into kind of just regular um, regular railing because you have so much of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's going to hurt. Um, okay. You know, I, I really, that's, you know, on my own house that I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the glass on just the staircase. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. have the iron railing upstairs. Okay. Um, I do want to check one thing. The entrance uh, with the railing, uh, what type of uh, railing are we using at the entrance? Because I think I like that it was it's some here. kind of a metal. Yeah. Oh, no. At the entrance. Yeah. So this problem. is like a metal. So you can't really see it because you're seeing the other railing in the background. Mm -hmm. So let me get to an angle where you can see it. I'm talking about the bottom. When we go to the first floor entrance, there is a ra two railings. Yeah. Yeah, those that's kind of like wrought iron with the okay. with the wood, with the wood rail. So it's the same thing we're going to use, you know, up okay. here at the top. Yeah. Um, and then on the front, this is a little different. But what it is is it's it's iron with two pieces of glass that are connected together. So it looks mm -hmm. nice, but you don't have to do that. You could use the same railing on this one as well. So it's not going to change anything in engineering. But when we go to pricing, you might say, oh well. You know, this is costing me a thousand bucks and I can do mm -hmm. this down here for 500 bucks. So I want to do that, you know. Okay. So, I mean, so we can interchange them. But mm -hmm. what I did was use the just the regular, you know, iron on this side. So code says mm -hmm. that you have to have railing on your stairs mm -hmm. if you're going over 18 inches. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're going up four feet. So we need to have rate some kind of railing, but most people on the front of their house where it's not covered, like mm -hmm. this right here has cover. Uh, well, it really does. I mean, it's got, I mean, it, it's got cover to the, from the edge of the stone, but, right. um, but most people don't, wouldn't use glass on this part of it. Um, right. because it's exposed, but, but would, uh, would also be a problem. Uh, could it be just all metal? No, no, no. You can do it metal where this top piece is metal as well, where that's okay. not wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it however you want. So I'm, not, I'm wondering if uh, wood over time will have to be replaced or... It's kind of the same thing that with, with paint on a handrail because your hand's going to rub it. It's mm. either going to be repainted or refinished. So wood, you just put a, re a new finish on it. Okay. Um, it's sometimes easier because it... It doesn't sometimes when you repaint stuff, it actually, you know, chips or melts the old paint. So it come, becomes blobby. Mm -hmm. And like like I have a, a service on my old one of my old townhomes that I lived in mm -hmm. that they came and did my railing and my doors every year. You know, I just paid them. You know, they come in and say, hey, you owe us one hundred and twenty five dollars because we resold your railing and your doors. You know, mm -hmm. every year I just had them do it. But it's kind of it's up to you what you like. You know, as far right. as the, but when, when you, all of those things are just fine details. Right. So right. when you go to bids, you know, your railing guy may say, Hey, you know, for metal and wood, it's this much for just metal. It's this much. And then you choose what you would rather have. Okay. Um, so back to my views, this is the, so I use the regular railing mm -hmm. here with the wood on top and the iron below on the other railing. So mm -hmm. what I did for your ceiling treatments, because we really didn't discuss ceiling treatments a whole lot. Right. What I did is I've got like, this is called a tray ceiling where it just pops up. Right. And I did that in the game room, but in the, here in the foyer, I thought it needed more than just mm -hmm. that. So what I did is I did what's, it's basically a tray with a, where this kind of recesses down. Mm -hmm. And you would have, like, you would either have like three, light fixtures or you may have one chandelier and two light mm -hmm. fixtures or you may have three recess mm -hmm. cans or whatever in this area and then mm -hmm. up in here is a cove so that it would have lighting that would make this all bright and lit up all the way around the edges but you mm -hmm. don't see any of the lighting mm -hmm. so i did that in there mm -hmm. uh, and then um these are this is uh the so the secondary bedrooms, I didn't do any ceiling treatments. Right. Um, most people don't in secondary bedrooms. So I left them blank. So bedroom two mm -hmm. and three and four are just, you know, mm -hmm. basic. Um, this one, it has 
two windows because it, this is the one that's on the corner of the house. Upstairs. Yeah. Um, so I added that that second window. Um, that's room, good. However, is on the first floor. So what I did with this one is I did do a tray ceiling in here. And this one, again, has that higher glass. So this is the on the corner of the house downstairs. All right. So this did, is uh, the bedroom on the first floor. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And then um, the dining room I did. Um, I came around with um, with uh, basic. I'm going to kind of zoom out this way. It's going to kind of stretch, but so it really doesn't look square. But this is a square mm -hmm. column that goes up. And then I've got a drop down of sheetrock that just kind of brackets off where that dining room is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then when you come into it, then I did a drop down here so that we could have backlighting that's going to shoot across all, all the way around the room. Mm -hmm. It's going to, to be a, you know, that that lighting inside of there mm. so it's a very modern ceiling treatment yeah uh, you know on those on these i think it it really looks good when you have those you know those kind of things but mm. if you like trays rather than the drop downs with mm -hmm. the back i think we could always do that okay this looks good hold on one sec i got bryson calling me i'm just gonna text him that i'm in a meeting um Um, so then, um, this is the dining room looking towards the stairs. So what I was telling you, I'll show you another view mm -hmm. later, but you really can't see the, you can't see the, the beat, the stairs through that glass. It just like kind of mm -hmm. like blocks it out. Like it's a solid pane, but it's really glass. So you'll be able to see through, but this kind of gives you a clear view of what I'm talking about. Here's your column. And mm -hmm. then there is the wrap around, kind of the drop down to kind of separate that room from the family room, so it doesn't look like it's just you know floating as part of the family room. Mm -hmm. And then this is the family room, looking out the back. Now here I did the same thing. I did a drop down um, that will have you know this. You can kind of see here when I'll highlight it. Here's the cove that comes up, and then back there will be the backlighting. So it'll branch out and shoot out this is the same thing it's a drop over the kitchen and so all of this is just going to highlight all the way around the perimeter of the room and then we'll have the recess cans and you know fan or whatever you choose to do as far as your lighting inside the middle of it um so i think that's really going to look really look good um yeah. then over here i did i did the cabinet and then i did shelves above but if you would rather have cabinets up here, you can do that or, you know, you can do you can leave it open so they can put a TV or choose what they want to do. I mean, however you want to do it. But I usually leave that up, you know, to my clients. You know, I think the mm -hmm. shelves work out great. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the time people are if they do the long linear fireplaces are going to put their TV here anyway. So the nice. shelves on either side look really good. Um, and then uh, this is the family room looking back to the dining. So mm -hmm. what I want you to see here is that even from your back door of the family room, you're going to be able to see all the way up here to the front door. Um, you're going to be able to see the stairs going up. And um, here is the, uh, that, you know, here's that drop down in there with, you know, so everything will look backlit. So it'll look pretty cool. Yeah. And here's the balance. There's the shelves on the other side. So yes. it's very balanced. And you'll see, for, I think in one of these views, you'll see the, the balance there. But And then this is kind of doing an angle where if you're standing in the corner room, looking towards the kitchen, looking towards the uh, down here to the back and out to the front door. Mm -hmm. um, then here is the family room looking towards the foyer. And I don't know why I'm not seeing the floor. There it goes. <laughs> I think I ran out of memory space for a second. Um, then there's that view kind of looking out to the back where you, that way you can see both doors. There's the door for the balcony area. 
there's the door for the front door staircase coming up and here's that that uh, mud room as you're coming in the back door i mean the the uh, garage door mm -hmm. and he, this is the view i was talking about here's another well one of the views here's the family looking towards the kitchen so now you can kind of see the symmetry of how everything is lined up everything is centered you got the balance of both doors the mm -hmm. range the hoods in the very center um, and then the other view is where the range and everything lines up with the other side of the house. Now, my cabinets, I mean, when we do 12 foot, we only take them up to 10 foot because if you go mm -hmm. any higher, it basically makes it look like um, like you're a giant, as well yeah. as one of the reasons why I did this ceiling this way, this cove ceiling where it's kind of dropped. Now it's going to light that whole area. It's going to light up all the way around the edges of the kitchen. Um, right. We do the cove lighting so it'll really be nice and this piece i really didn't draw it but this cabinet the wood will continue down the side right here so it'll all you know the refrigerator will be all encased in wood um like it's you know punched in there okay <laughs> um and then that's why i was talking about the windows i want those to be at this level so that they're about six inches off the bottom of this this drop down um, mm -hmm. So symmetrically, it's going to look good, you know, from every direction. Um, and then this is as you're walking in the front door um, and you're looking up the stairs, looking through. I want you to see, you're gonna see the whole door, the transoms back here, you know, the column and, um, you know, and then there's that ceiling treatment I told you I did up there. So it's going to be a pop up with a with a drop down cove lighting in the middle. Um, oh well, we don't need to show the front views. And then here's the game room. Um, so this kind of shows you there's that four year drop down, and then this is the tray. I just did a tray ceiling in here, and then these are the windows off to the front of the house, and the window that's at the side of the house. So nice big open room railing all the way around. So this room is going to seem really huge. Because, you know, you've got the railing, you know, that's mm -hmm. going to give you another, you know, what is it, seven feet from here to the wall. So it's going to be really open game room area. And that's why I just went up with a tray and didn't do any kind of anything else special inside of there. Um, then here's the game room if you're just standing at the back and looking towards the stair. Perfect. And here's that view that I wanted you to see. So this is yeah, the balance. That's showing you the symmetry of the cabinets on the on the other side. So mm -hmm. now you have the cabinets, you have the floating shelves. Um, you can even see the bottom of the stair from in here. And then now that's that area I was saying I had the drop down sheetrock with the column to kind of separate the dining room from the family room. So and there's, there's a, a window there lot, as well. Yeah, a whole lot of separation and a whole lot of elements and stuff going on mm -hmm. um, in that area. Then this is the kitchen looking back to the rear of the house. What I just was trying to show here is that when, even though you're in the kitchen, it's so open, you're gonna be able to see straight through to the outside, um, outside outdoor living area, you know, from inside mm -hmm. even the, the kitchen. And then the master bath, um, this is, basically showing how I did the uh, the glass. Um, so I've got the two doors on the sides and then I have mm -hmm. the his and her shower heads at the back. Um, the glass only goes up to the top of the arch. So this barrel mm -hmm. vault will still be open, you know, above there um, to let any steam out. But with the glass, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be like a drafty or anything. So um, but I think it really is going to look nice. This window is going to let a lot of light in. And then you can start your mirrors and have them over the lavatories over here and here. Um, this is going to let a lot of natural light in. So if you have a hers um, makeup mirror right here, it's going to be perfect because you're going to have natural light coming in through this window. Um, but it's very balanced. You know, the, 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 uh, the freestanding tubs right in front. The only thing I was going to ask you is if you wanted to do right here on this edge, do a half wall rather than the glass going all the way to the ground. 
So uh, do half wall, um, how would that look like if you can? Yeah, let me show you real quick. Um, so what I usually recommend, mm -hmm. is some people do it and some people don't because just to, if you're, you know, want some kind of modesty when you're in the shower, mm -hmm. um, sometimes the walls work out better um, if you'll just do a half wall. So let me just take a wall and I'll put it right here. I only want it to be four foot tall. And I'm gonna put it right across here. Um, and then I'm going to take this and this, and just punch it out just a tad. Okay. So now when I go back to that view, master bath, it looks like that. So the glass mm. comes down to here. The cool thing is, is this can be like a really nice tile um, to give you kind of a backsplash to here. Then you can have your faucet overflow into the tub here. And then also on the back side of this wall, you can have niches where you can put like shampoos and, and stuff like that. So this is usually my recommendation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people want all glass and it to be just completely see-through, which does make the room look bigger. Right. But to me, I like the convenience of three things. With that wall, you get some, a little bit of privacy, mm -hmm. um, you know, from the waist down. Um, you also get, um, you get to have a wall that that faucet can be mounted to instead of coming from the floor um to feed the 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 uh, freestanding tub but it also gives you the ability to put those niches in there where you don't see your shampoos and your your stuff you don't want to be seen when mm. you walk so this is usually my suggestion um but i want to show people both ways so with with it and without it i think if it's without it then we can have some kind of a splash on the the back wall and that would show outside. So you see where the shower is, the whole wall, we could uh, design it to, in a way where the whole thing shows. Okay. Uh, right. What I'll do you think, it, Amy? I'll leave it like this and then you can, that's why I give you the choice um, because some people, they want to see the whole room when they walk in there and they want it to just right. be beautiful. And then some people want a little bit of you know, privacy, hidden, hidden place. So, but the thing is, is that it's really not going to affect engineering. Um, right. It's really just going to affect the glass company. And, you know, if you decide you want the wall, when you meet with your framer, just say, hey, we decided to do a wall here. We're not going to do, um, we're not going to do all glass. What do you think? So all the glass, we can always have a, uh, have see-through glass that will give you some privacy but then if do you if, do that? But if you design the back wall then you won't be able to see it if you're going to use semi-transparent glass yeah. then if you because you're entering right you want to have some kind of uh, experience you would want to design you want right. to have so, some kind the, of pattern but the beauty is is that if you have a half wall here you're you still doing the same you're going to see all of your design up here. Right. And, and then you can design this wall as well. Yes. And that pattern can flow. We can use that pattern to flow in this wall as well. Yeah. You can do the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, as long I, as the, and that's the pattern that we, you we just make sure the pattern is consistent within the back wall to the front. How, how many customers pick which design? How, how do you divide them? Like I half and half? Probably, I would probably say 80% want this wall. Okay. I see. Because again, okay. it's kind of like it's kind of like me. I don't mind, you know, if my wife walks in mm -hmm. and I'm showering, I'm okay. But you know, if my grandson walks in, at least I'm kind of half covered. <laughs> All right, right. You know, okay. so I mean, that's part of me. But the yeah. other thing is is that I don't I don't like seeing shampoo bottles, and my wife has mm -hmm. tons of them. So this wall will hide it. Yeah. And okay, it, leave it there then for now. It we'll just make sure the design on the on those walls are consistent. Yeah. So what I'll do real quick, just so that I have a note of it, I'm going to make a note real quick, just so that.
All right. Yeah, so once we get this stuff approved, we can actually we can send it out for hard bids and engineering at the same time. Hmm. That'll be cool. Yeah. Okay, so now let's get master. So then the master suite. Um, and here I did the raised ceiling, um, just the the pop-up. And then, you know, obviously you have the windows going out to the balcony, the double doors, and then window to the side. And the door's going into um, the, the master bath. Um, and then I did a pantry view. So this is kind of hard. I mean, it looks very long, narrow, squeezed in, but it's not tight. I mean, y'all have plenty of space in here, and it also has a window. So it'll be it'll be open, free-flowing. Some clients, they like this, the cabinets up here, but some mm -hmm. clients don't. So, I mean... What I usually recommend is that where you walk in the door is maybe leave these where their cabinet so that kind of looks good, even if the doors, you know, open. Mm -hmm. And then these, you know, back here, you might would put in there with uh, you can put shelves or whatever. Yeah, I think it might be better to have shelves on this side because shelves are more convenient sometimes if you in the. Yeah, but you can do that with your trim carpenter. Um, okay. And what I usually tell people, it's easier to, it's better to take off, take away than add. So, you know, if you sit there and say, hey, we're going to delete these cabinets and we just want to add shelves on this side, then you're open to do that. Um, because on the, here's the first floor. So, so what I'm thinking is, is you want to leave these probably right here as cabinets. So if this door is open, it still looks really nice. You see that window, that light. But then do all of this over here as as um as shelves. Yeah. And I can I can just delete those because I think that's probably gonna be the way to go. Yeah, just do shelves over here, cabinets right here. Yeah. Um, which here's the cabinet view. So you know, do shelves over here on this side and do the cabinets on this side. All right, let me go back to that view. Um, then the last one I have is the utility room. So you have the window, the sink with the window above it, then your long line of, of uppers and then lower cabinets. And again, if you want to take out a section of these shelves and do a drip rod, you know, shelves or drip rod, you can do so. Um, some people do that above their washer and dryer. You could do that. I mean, there's just all kinds of different ways you can do your cabinets, but the utility room, you know, has lots of room, you know, to be able to, to put, to do whatever you want to do in there. So any, even though this is 12 foot tall, I didn't put any uppers up here. I'm just feeling like at some point you have to draw a line on a spec home. You know, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put, uppers up here it's just going to be too much money i feel like awesome. you're going to into it um and you know if it was going to be a home you're going to live in you might think about it just because you have all that extra real estate but i don't think i would do it as a spec okay. um, and so that's kind of all of the views um that i have for the interior views but the cool thing about <clears throat> i feel like looking at this um perspective i'm going to turn this i need to turn off the high uh high and okay So this, this is kind of the view I want you to see. Yeah, very nice. So, so this you're seeing in there, see, this is the drops that I'm doing. So the, basically the ceiling drops down in these areas and then up in here, you're going to have lighting. So the lighting is going to shine all the way across the wall 
and just basically, it's just a very modern sealant treatment. And just basically you see it's a cove and in the middle there's a split in between kind of what's the family room and what's the kitchen and just looks really good. Um, and then the freestanding stair, this is the way I wanted you to see it. With glass, you can see that you see all your treads, but you have your safety and it looks pretty as you're walking up. And here I did kind of that cove lighting background in this area. Um, then I did the traditional just tray ceiling over here in this area. Um, and then if I push a little bit further, yeah, I can show you this. See, that's kind of the, the shower deal. See, the glass comes up to here and your dome is way up here, your, your barrel vault. And then there's that wall, kind of a four foot wall right there. <laughs> and again, if you decide to take that out, it's not gonna just make sure you let the framer know and he'll fix it and make it work. But um, the other thing that I did um, that you may not have noticed is on the outside, I, I bumped this up and did a little one foot pony wall on your outside roof. Mm -hmm. One, because I needed it for these for these sealant treatments, but also mm -hmm. there wasn't enough room in here for your AC and stuff. Like, I just mm -hmm. felt like there wasn't enough head height. So this way we can take and put a disappearing stair in this hallway or the game room up here and be able to get into here for your air conditioners. Um, nice. So, so there, that's, so I did a little pop up on the outside wall and I did note it for the framer. That there's going to be a pony wall. Um, and then kind of want to show you that opposite view. And you can kind of see here's the crawl space underneath. It's not mm -hmm. much, but you know, it's everything that we needed for that for your piece of property. Um, okay. and you'll also see that because they require it for the city, I've got well. Well, it's on the foundation plan, but anyway, I've got I've got um, three vents on the inside of your garage. Okay, uh, can I look at that stair going into the house uh, from the garage side? Yes. So that's it right there. Okay, perfect. So I mean, I've got a wall up underneath it. So if you wanted to, you know, have a little hole right here, you might you could use that little section of storage if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, basically you just go up these steps and then turn and enter the house. So nice. you have a really tall garage. Mm -hmm. uh, so how many, how high is the garage? So the garage we raised the, for the da, 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 front. Um, so we raised the garage from here to here's four foot so you're going to be um 16 feet 16 so feet, okay. so somebody could put a lift in there if they wanted to you okay. know so that if there's ever a flood they can raise their car up as well hmm. um so that's always a benefit you can tell people hey you have the opportunity to put a lift in there and get your car out of the water as well um, if, if there's any, ever any kind of flooding or anything like that. Uh, so, yeah. No, I love the design. It's very modern design. And, uh, the houses in Bel Air right now, all that are selling are very modern. Yeah. So here's that, like, once you walk into the foyer, so this is that kind of, that's that ceiling treatment I was talking about so that we're going to have the, the lights back up in here that reflect around. So this, this is all going to be lit up and highlighted. And then you got also, then you have a ceiling to hang your stuff from. And then you get that stair like that with the glass going up um, and see, it even looks really good with that railing at the top, you know, even though you. So how go. does the four year, when you enter, um, uh, I'm curious how, if we enter the house, do we see the high ceiling and? Yeah. So when you enter, that's that's your view when when you walk in the front door. Okay. 
You're gonna, so you when, see yeah, all the way to the top. Wow. All the way up. All so the way down until you get underneath the, where the stair lane where the landing is at this end of the house. So when nice. you walk in the house, I mean at first, so let me kind of give you the other view because I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to say it's you're gonna see it, but your perspective when you first walk in, you're gonna have a little bit of of ceiling above you. Just that little three feet, well, four yeah. feet ceiling is gonna be above you when you walk in. But your eyes are not going to, you know, your eye is going to see straight up to that view I just showed you. But that because that's the balcony. But yeah, once you're in, you're going straight up. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. You're going straight up, two stories, all the way till you get, all the way till you get to, um, right here and walk right under yeah. this. That's where it starts becoming one story in this section over here. So Once you get into the family room. Yeah, it's two stories from this point right here all the way to this point right here. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's a fat, I mean, it's a fabulous view. When you walk in, it's gonna be like, whoa. Because mm -hmm. um, you're gonna see two stories tall, you're gonna see that ceiling treatment that I put in there, and you're gonna see that stair. It's just gonna be, and then if you're standing here, you're going to see that railing. Then you're going to see a ceiling treatment that's in the game room. I mean, I think it's just going to be gorgeous. Yeah, nice. I mean, I think that I think the entry is just going to blow people away when they walk first walk in. Um, and then this, I'm going to stretch it over here, back to where we were. So that's kind of the view of. The family room um, and the dining room with the ceiling that I have up there, the ceiling treatment in there. And then if I stretch it just a tad bit further, this is that the prime two bedrooms, I think, on the house. This these two bedrooms are the best ones. Yeah. Um and they have double windows in there. Yeah, they got lots of windows, corner windows, front windows. Um, that window looks too low, even though it's at eight feet. Mm. I, I might consider putting that up. Shoot, I hate putting it up at 10, but that's where it's going to match the exterior. Mm. But that's all you're wanting is you're wanting light. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's very nice at that every bathroom has a window. Yeah. So yeah. And then, you know, I think the balance of doing the shelves on either side, putting the TV right here would be my preference. But some yeah. people some people say, I don't want a TV above my fireplace, but nowadays it does with the fireplaces we have, the quality fireplaces, it's not a big issue. But now I've given you at least enough attic space that we can you know, in the center of the home, we can, we have enough head heights, you know, to almost stand, you know, fully stand up right where, if you're working on the AC, if they put the AC right up in here. Yeah. Um, and then you got the barrel vault on this side, you got a little bit of ceiling treatments on this side. And then let's go back and look the other direction now. Oh. Undo. What did I grab? Undo. This. Let's cut it this way. This is pretty cool software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, is that now I can send you this model. Mm -hmm. and you can download a viewer and you can oh. kind of do these little cuts yourself if you want to play with it. Wow. wow. Yeah. And one of the things you might consider, though, since you're mm -hmm. going to be specking this house, mm -hmm. I don't know if you were there um, a couple of weeks ago when I spoke. Were you there at the design meeting? Yeah, we were. That was good presentation. So there is a, a, a some people called Authenticus that were there. Yes, we are. 
planning to use them maybe and i you mentioned that we should go through you um because we'll get a good discount to use them right. we're thinking when we have a potential when we sign up a buyer then we might send them to authenticus to to um pick some of their finishes and things like that okay yeah so i, I think that would be another um yes another opportunity but i went to their website looked at it and you could pick different kitchen finishes marbles things like that um right so they had a lot of that information there but yeah i think that's our plan so yeah i already showed you kind of that direction um so we'll go through ufb um use them so we can get the discount yeah see yeah, yeah it it's basically since I've done the model, they they give you a better price on their on their uh, service. So, but anyway, that's kind of you know the the walkthrough that I wanted to do with you and show you. Um, is there anything else that you feel like you haven't seen that I can give you? No, this is very nice. Thank you for doing this uh, because now. We and both my wife and I are three D person. We need to see it to understand, and I think yeah. we understand much better now. Yeah, I I mean I overall I mean I've cut this thing so many different ways, and it just every everything looks good. I'm very happy with the design, um, you know, and hopefully somebody will be able to help you with you know what people are looking for as far as finishes in Bel Air. Um, so that you can pick, you know, the appropriate finishes um, out there in that area. Yes. But I really think overall, as far as the the design, the bones, everything is look. They everything looks really good, really nice and clean, mm -hmm. clean, clean modern lines. And I thank you for um, making us keep that uh, floating stairs because we didn't realize that it was a floating uh, staircase. So that looks nice. Uh, it's actually part of the design. Yeah. And that's that, definitely your style is very modern and very clean. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the whole thing is I just feel like if you spend your money in a couple of areas, your entry, your front entry, right. you know, I want people to focus when they come into your home I want them, let me go back to the main view. I want them to focus on this front area right here. Right. And when they walk in that house, what is your focal point? That, that two-story high ceiling with that extra special ceiling treatment that's in here, that floating stair, mm -hmm. is just going to blow people away when they walk in that house. Right, um, right. And that's what I want, you know, and then... I just love the the modern features. I mean, like when you're driving down the street, imagine you're going to see this big old huge, you know, mm -hmm. flat section of the roof right there. It's just, right. it just I mean, I think from any angle, it's beautiful. So Tim, quickly, what do I need to do next? Uh, do I, um, so what, what are the next, who do I need to follow up with next at Bill Queen Custom Homes now? So what I need you to do for me is I mm -hmm. need you to send me an email and say, we are ready to move to bid sets and engineering. And okay. then I'm gonna send that to Kelly, which is the, she is the um, office manager of Bill Green. Mm -hmm. And they are going to send that, she will send it out to the engineer and send mm -hmm. it out to, uh, to, get, to get hard bids. Then, okay. And then Brian will tell you who you've got to go meet with um, to get some of those hard bids. So some of the people you're going to meet with, I can just kind of tell you, but he's going to give you a better list. But you're going to okay. meet with your window and door company. You're going to meet with your exterior cladding people, like for, for your exterior stone and stucco and siding. And he'll tell you where to pick out your colors. Um and then you also are going to have to meet with your people for your, your slab um, and for your um, appliances and all of those things so that you can help pick out stuff that we have to get bids for. Because we can't get bids okay. for appliances until you pick them out, obviously. So Brian, okay. he's probably going to have like four pieces of four or five 
places you have to go and do some homework to pick out stuff just to get the basic bids, you know, and I know that you're kind of doing this on spec, but um, he, maybe he'll be able to tell you, Hey, here's what most of our clients pick out, you know? Um, and then, uh, then if you're unsure of what you want to put in there. Okay. But other than that, like they're going to get three concrete bids for your slab. They're going to get three, you know, bids for your framing. They're going to get three bids for everything, you know, inside of the house. They're going to take care of all of your, your plumbing, your HVAC, your framing, um, get bids for your lumber package. Um, and you're going to, and you're going to help in finding your window company, what windows you want to use and all of your, you know, plumbing fixtures, lighting fixtures, uh, um, um, appliances. And then okay. you're going to pick out what kind of countertops you want. You're going to pick out what kind of floors you want. And so that's going to be all your choices so that you can, they can put that part of it into the, the big budget. So once they have the big budget, it takes about three weeks to do engineering. It also takes about three weeks to do bid sets. So that's why I said you would, mm -hmm. you're saving time by letting me go to finals so that we can do those simultaneously. So okay. once you get your engineering, what I want you to do, you don't have to, mm -hmm. but it's a kind of a, a courtesy um, service that I provide you is I review your engineering and make sure everything lines up with what I did for your design. And okay. I'll tell you, hey, everything looks good to me. And I'll, I'll tell you again, I'm not an engineer, um, but everything looks good to me um, based on my design. And then you, once you approve that, then that's when we'll print your final sets. And mm. at that point, we won't print your final sets, but until you have your big budget meeting, but you'll sit down with Bryson and Brian mm. and you'll go through your budget, which is like 1400 line items, make sure everything's in line with your budget. And then you tell me if there's anything you want to change or, you know, mm -hmm. even when you meet with your window company, the window company may say, hey, I can save you a thousand bucks if you'll make these two changes on windows. And you go, yeah, that's worth it. And then I'll, I'll make those changes for you before we print. So, okay. so all of that's going to come together. You're going to have a big budget meeting. You're going to have engineering. Everything's going to come together. We're going to try to get all of that approved and make any final changes before we print. Then, okay. we, then we print your plans and we, at that point, um, we, uh, at the very end, we submit to the city. We only print two sets to submit to the city. And then once the city approves your plans, then, and if they don't approve them the first time through and they make any changes, I'll make those changes. And then we print your final, your final sets. Okay. All right. This is very nice. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, no problem. So all I need from you is just to give me an email saying, hey, we're ready to send the bid sets into engineers. But just remember, okay. we've gone to finals. Your plans are not final. We still can make changes as long as we don't move exterior walls or roofs or anything like that. Um, Perfect. As long as we're making window changes, door changes, um, you know, if you decide, hey, I don't want to use wood here, I'm going to use tile, all those changes, we can make all those changes you know, all the way up until finals. Perfect. All right. All right. Thank you very much, sir. This is really nice. This is a work of art. No problem. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it built. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thanks, all Tim. Right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you.